I've got my GSS 87, 88, 89, 93 data file open again here on my desktop. And I wanted to create this brief addendum video to introduce you to one of the relatively new features in uh, what I have now as SPSS version 29. Uh, in the earlier videos, I was using an earlier version of SPSS. I believe it was version 25. Uh, and my notes show that this uh, feature was added in version 27. So if you've got version 27 or later, you should see this feature, certainly if you have version 29, which is the version that I'm looking at here. If you've got an earlier version than that, you won't see that. You'll see something more similar to what was shown in my videos on the chi-square test, as well as the independent and paired samples t-tests for the comparison of means. And we'll revisit some of the examples, uh, or at least similar examples, but we'll look at them with the independent samples proportion test. Before we begin, though, I have to add my, my filter. I'm going to look at just the 1993 data again because we're going to look at some of the music variables. And if you've seen my earlier videos, you're aware of why we do that. This is data from the General Social Survey, and they only collected the data on the musical preferences in 1993. So I'm going to the data menu. I'm going to say select cases. If condition is satisfied, and I'm going to say if year equals 1993, we're going to filter out the unselected cases. I click paste my syntax file. You can see my active data set, data set one. It's the only file that I have open. And I will run that. And then if we look at our data view, you can see all the non-1993 year data has been slashed out, but 1993 is available. So that's what we're looking at. Now, in the earlier videos, when we reviewed the independent samples t-test, the paired samples t-test, we went to the analyze menu, and then we went to an option that was called compare means. But in this newer version of SPSS, you can see that it's no longer just compare means, it's both compare means and proportions. So we still have those same options under the menu for our one sample t-test, independent samples t-test. A paired samples t-test, one-way analysis of variance. At the bottom of this list, we have the one sample proportions, independent samples proportions, and paired samples proportions tests. And again, this is a newer feature. These were not available prior to version 27. And again, I'm in version 29 right now. So let's take a look at an independent samples proportions example. And we've got the same data that you've seen in the earlier videos, but this is a, a new interface. Let's use as our grouping variable for this first example, respondent sex. And if you recall from the earlier videos, this was coded one equals male and two equals female. Now we can look at a categorical variable first. Let's take a look at labor force status, a variable called work stat. Now work stat is coded one if they are uh, full-time employed. But since it's code one, that would be the first value. So I'm going to define success as first value. In other words, I'm testing whether they're working full time. And I'm comparing male and female. Everything else here we'll use will be the default values. There are different tests you can run. If you click on tests, you can see here the default value is walled null hypothesis. In other words, we're testing whether they're significantly different from each other. Or in other words, that the difference between the proportions is equal to zero. So I click on paste. I look at my syntax, and you can see here's the syntax for the proportions test. If I highlight this and I run it, I get this output. And you can see here, here are the actual proportions. 63.9% of males are employed full-time. See, one equals working full-time. Versus 40.3% of females. So it's, it's a fairly large difference. You can see the difference in the proportions here. It calculates 23.7%. That's just the difference between 63.9 and 40.3%. So is that difference of 0.237, or in other words, 23.7%, is that statistically significant? And whether we look at it as a one-sided or two-sided, in other words, one-tailed or two-tailed test, it's going to be statistically significant, less than 0 0.001. For those of you that have watched my earlier videos, Let's look at this a little bit differently with some of the tools that we had previously played around with. So if I examined this as a chi-square test, you know, if I go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Cross Tabs, I'm going to take 
respondent sex and put that in the columns because that's essentially my independent variable. I'll take work status, labor force status, and put that in my rows. For statistics, I'm going to check off chi-square phi and Kramer's V. This should be reviewed from those earlier videos. And for the cells, I'm going to look at the column percentages. And this should give me everything I need to, um, to evaluate this. I'm going to click on Paste. You can see my syntax for the cross tabs. If I highlight that and I run it, here we could see again what we saw in the output from the independent samples proportion test, 63.9% versus 40.3%. So we're getting the same numbers here. If we look at our chi-square test, it is statistically significant. And we've got a very strong relationship. This would be a Kramer's V situation, since it is not a two by two table, less than 0.001. But if you recall, the chi-square test is only testing whether there are significant differences across all of these categories. Like, is there a significant difference somewhere? Do we have a cell where the observed count is significantly different than the expected count, right? It's not pinpointing any specific difference. So because this is statistically significant, we can't automatically assume that this particular difference is significant. So this is analogous to when we were running the one-way analysis of variance across a variable with three or more categories and comparing the means across the three or more categories. But then we wanted to drill down specifically into like, well, these two categories are these two specifically different. And so the independent samples proportion test allows us to examine those specific differences that we're seeing in the cross tab when we do a chi-square test in the same way that we were able to drill down into the specific differences between two categories in an analysis of variance, but we would drill down into it with the independent samples t-test. So let's take a look at another example. We've talked a fair amount throughout the videos about the usage of scales, like a Likert scale or a Likert type scale. It's a five point scale, technically really probably ordinal in nature. And if it's ordinal in nature, we really shouldn't be taking a mean. Now, within commercial marketing research and in a lot of social sciences, we will take attitudinal scales like that and treat them as interval level scales, which allows us then to compare the means. You may work with a very strict statistician at some point that says that's not really appropriate. You're using ordinal data and you're running like an independent samples t-test on the means of this five point scale that doesn't really meet the requirements of of uh, an interval level scale where you would be allowed to take a mean. So you could use the independent samples proportion test to make that comparison, but treating it still as an ordinal level variable. So let's take a look uh, again. If we go to analyze, compare means and proportions, um, independent samples proportions test, let's get rid of the labor force status. We'll still look at respondent sex. Just that's, a, that's an easy split for us to look at. Now in the independent samples t-test, video, we looked at um, preference for Broadway musicals. So let's put that in here again. If you recall, this variable was coded one through five where one equals like it very much and five equals dislike it very much. So let's say we're going to look at this as a top box comparison. In other words, the top box in this case will be like it very much. That actually would be the first value, a code of one. So we're defining success as the first value. Right, we've got the same groups here. Let me paste this. I go to my syntax and I'm going to run it. And we see here, like or dislike musicals equals one like very much. We have males only 7.9%, 0.079, versus females 0.212 or 21.2%. And so we're seeing that there's a higher percentage of females that like Broadway musicals very much compared to males. The difference here is negative 0.133 or negative 13.3%. It's a 13.3% gap between these two values. And then we come down here, we see our significance values less than 0 0.001. If we had hypothesized that a larger percentage of females will like Broadway musicals very much compared to the percentage of males who like it very much, we would have a one-tailed test. We'd look at the one-sided p-value. If we were just saying, are they different? Two-sided p-value. 
if we had hypothesized that a higher percentage of males liked it very much, when we got to this result, we would have just stopped. It's not, it's in the wrong direction. So let's take a look at that work stat variable again, the labor force status. I expand this a little bit here. And so we had here these categories. Again, I'm in the variable view of the data editor now. Uh, we have working full time was one. We looked at that earlier. Let's take a look at retired versus school. So these would be codes five and six on this variable. And let's see how they feel about oldies rock music. Right, so that's oldies variable. So if I go to analyze, compare means and proportions, independent samples proportions test, I'm going to bring um, labor force status in now as my grouping variable. And I said I wanted to look at codes five and six, right? I'm going to drag the oldies rock variable in as my te test variable. Again, this one is coded one, two, three, four, five where one equals like it very much, five equals dislike it very much. Let's say instead of looking at the top box score, this time we want to look at the top two box score. In other words, values one and two. We could create a new variable, and then we have total control, you know, recode into a different variable. But we don't have to do that. We do have to look at things maybe a little bit differently than we really want to. Because these are codes one and two, there's a cut point option here, which will allow us to isolate codes one and two. However, it doesn't let you do a cut point for the bottom two. It only lets you do a cut point of some value and above. But to isolate codes one and two, the like it and like it very much values, we can set our cut point at three. So it's now going to separate out the group that's three, four, and five, which is neither like it nor dislike it, dislike it, dislike it very much. It's gonna separate them out from the one and two. It's not the group that likes it or likes it very much. It's the group that doesn't like it or like it very much. That's the way that this would be coded, essentially. But it's the same test, so that's, that's a way to get at it directly. So let me click on Paste. I will look at my syntax now. I'm going to run that selection. I'm assuming school means students. Uh, they're in school. 63.9% of retired did not like oldies rock. 34.8% of school age that disliked it, or, you know, greater than or equal to three. So there's a 29.1% difference in the proportion. And if we were just doing this as a two-tailed test, it's statistically significant. There's a, even though we've got a relatively small sample size here, we, we don't have that many school age, um, but there's a smaller percentage that don't like <laughs> Um, oldies rock music amongst the school age versus retire. Now, if we wanted to run that, looking at, you know, just the top box score again, we could do that. So if I go back to analyze, compare means and proportions, independent samples proportion, let's just change this back to first value. So first value being one, one being like it very much. If I paste that, go to my syntax, and I'll run that. And so we're seeing here 28.3% of students like it very much versus only 11% of retired. Um, <clears throat> remember, again, this is 1993. So retired folks, you're talking about folks that like predated rock and roll. So that's why even oldies rock, maybe they, they didn't like. Uh, context, always very important in statistics. It is statistically significant, not less than 0.001 now at the 0 0.002 level, but that's still statistically significant, anything 0 0.05 or below. Now we could be kind of getting at an age thing here with retired in school. And so I'm gonna show you one last version of this independent samples proportion test, just looking at the options. If we go to analyze, compare means and proportions, independent samples proportions, instead of this uh, labor force variable, let me take them out, and we were basically, in looking at retired versus students, we were positing essentially an age question, right? Is, is, it, is preference for oldies rock age related? So let's grab age. And we'll bring that in as the grouping variable. And now it won't make sense to do one and two in this one, but we can either use the midpoint of age or we can again similarly use a cut point. 
let's take a look at like people over, you know, 40 or over. So we'll cut it at 40. Click on paste. I'm going to look at my syntax file. And I'll run this. And so we're looking at people under 40 and 40 or older. 29.9% of those under 40 liked Oldies Rock very much. Only 23.1% of those 40 and older. So it's a 6.8 point difference, 6.8%. That is statistically significant. That is a big enough difference. Um, and then there we were breaking it by age. So probably what we were seeing with retired versus student is really just the same age effect. And we'll get into tests where you can control for that in a multivariate analysis in some of the later videos. But that's an independent samples proportions test. In the same way that this was analogous to your independent samples t-test, we could do a similar thing with proportions with the paired samples proportions test. And I'll do that in a separate video.